and the pen, as it were, dear reader, is now in my hand, and I'm claiming the advantage, taking it for myself, for you will notice that the written word hides the body of the one who writes. Or all you know, I might be a man in disguise? Unlikely, you say, with all this feminist prattle flying out here and there and everywhere, but can you be sure? Hello everyone, this is Reading Matter, your book-sized, uh, your bite-sized podcast about books. I'm Natalie, its host, and today I'm talking about one of the novels I loved. I read it last year and feel like rereading it now again. I'm talking about The Summer Without Men, written by Siri Hustvedt. This is a brilliant novel that was published in 2011, and I have just quoted one of the amazing passages from that book. It is not that large. It is, oh, it's actually, yeah, about 200 pages long. And it is written from the perspective of Mia. Mia, whose husband suddenly decided that their relationship needs a pause. They have been married for something like 30 years. And they have a grown-up daughter, more or less grown-up, right? Um, and this proposal of a pause comes as a great shock to Mia. Um, as a result, she sort of overreacts emotionally and ends up in a psychiatric ward for a month, which basically changes her life in many ways. When she is discharged, she moves back to her hometown to be closer with closer with her mother. Um, her mother lives in old people's home, uh, and she's a part of a reading group of a book club that goes through a lot of female written English language anglophone classics. Um, they're talking about a lot of interesting things. Actually, I was just thinking about the parallel of this book club with another book club where older ladies, elderly ladies, discuss contemporary literature, um, namely in Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. Those two are very interesting examples of book clubs for women. Yeah, as, as Mia moves back to Minnesota to her childhood home, almost her childhood home, like her child, her, her hometown, right? She uh, begins teaching a creative writing class, creative writing workshop at a local school as a sort of special summer activity some of the students could take upon. Um, and this is how we end up in the setting where Mia literally spends her summer without men. She is still, in a way, in touch with her husband via emails, letters. Um, but the main focus of the whole novel is her interaction, not just with herself, her inner self, after all those traumatic events that happened, but also her observation of women around her. This is actually one of the parts why I treasure this book so much. Sarah Hustmet is a marvelous writer. Like, her language is so carefully crafted. It is poetic and prosaic at the same time. And what I also liked about it is that she is looking at women of different ages. Um, and she's not really judgmental. <laughs> there is a little bit of, you know, judgment from Mia as this middle-aged protagonist towards the girls she's teaching. But again, only at first, because later she gets to talk to them to get involved into their lives, into their at least creative process, if not lives completely, right? Because she's just a teacher. Um, and then even this disdain that, you know, like older generations tend to have towards younger <laughs> generations, it sort of subsides. Um, so we have different, uh, different ages and stages of life of women happening around Mia. And being a poet, being a creative writer herself, she is very sensitive to those things. She is very observant. Uh, so we do not only have those teenagers uh, that she's teaching, like older teenagers, um, and not just the elderly ladies from the old people's home and the reading club, but she also has this young neighbor who has two children. She is young herself, and she has two children and a, a difficult, short-tempered husband who every once in a while shows up in the novel, ruining the whole without men <laughs> kind of dynamic. Um, but then basically here we have also Mia, who is like a middle-aged woman who has a grown-up daughter. She is a successful professional, a creative professional, uh, who 
basically was so shocked by her husband's decision to take a pause in their relationship. And the pause with a capital P is another woman. All of those women are constantly interacting. They are always talking to each other, writing to each other, discussing books written by other women as well. Like, for example, Jane Austen, uh, like in the book club, one of the books ladies read um, is Pride and Prejudice. Classic, right? So this entire novel is based on interaction between women, on sharing their experience of so many different things in life. And I'm not saying just it's like, you know, the hard experiences, all the feminists rattle, <laughs> how unfair and difficult it is, but generally just what is it like to be a woman? What things they experience as teenagers, as, as young parents, as people going through the divorce or an elderly lady who has spent her whole life uh, making embroideries of uh, explicit nature, <laughs> let's call it so, because I'm not sure right now if they only feature women or men and women both. So I'm not really sure about this at the moment, to be honest. But that was her secret creative outlet that she never showed to anybody but Mia. Um, all of those things are just fascinating and told with such care, which I think is an important quality of Sira Husband's writing. She's not been she's not tiptoeing around a lot of things she's been been very straightforward sometimes even painfully so but at the same time you do hear a lot of i guess respect and understanding of what she's writing about the summer without men is a beautifully crafted novel it can be a great reading for everyone at any time of year it's not only a summer read although it is set in the summer um but still it can be read at any age, it can be read by person of any gender or no gender whatsoever. Just because it is so human and beautiful. Um, and I mean, it is not an all encompassing female experience, um, cause we do still have a woman who is obviously a white American middle class successful creative professional. But at the same time, this is a book that gave me a lot of peace of mind when I was reading it. I guess because Siri Hustwood is such a great writer. So that's why even now, as actually it's been two years, I think, since I've read it. Time flies, time flies in the pandemic, right? Um, so I opened it again, preparing for this podcast episode, and I realized I can just keep reading it. I, I, I'm just enjoying it so much that I uh, I don't really reread books anymore because I, I feel like I want to devote this time to new books, <laughs> especially considering how many new books coming out at the moment every year. But sometimes you just need to have this sort of comfort zone, I guess, comfortable novel to go back to. And definitely Siri Hustred, The Summer Without Men is one of those. Thank you guys for listening. I hope uh, you'll pick it up take a look at it and let me know what you think. See you next week. Bye. And the pen, as it were, dear reader, is now in my hand.